and we're live. Like I've heard good things about like the first two seasons, I think of Suits. I really want to watch like Oz and The Sopranos and skip Oz. And, no, yeah. don't skip Oz. Oz right. is. <sighs> Let me give you like a synopsis of Oz without a single pot plot point being ruined. Um, these guys are in a federal penitentiary. I think it's federal. Yeah. And they will give you glimmers of hope. Like, oh, oh, things are going to work out for this guy or that guy. Or, oh, okay, this episode is about redemption. It's not about that. It's about loss. The whole show is about loss. Inexplicable, unavoidable misery and loss. And sometimes Suffering surprise lost. <laughs> sometimes yeah. surprise loss. Like, just when you think maybe a character is going to, like, have a good day, someone will shit in their mouths, literally. Just when you think a character is going to have a good day, like, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to rape your wife on the outside. What can I do to stop you? Nothing. We'll send you. It's just like, like everyone suffers for no reason. It's all unavoidable. None of it is justifiable. There are no redeeming, re redeemed characters. None of the characters have redeeming qualities. They're all just, it's all about suffering and dick. Yeah. You've even the guy. More dick <laughs> than you've ever seen in your life. Oh, okay? yeah. You're going to see a huge I watched amount this of right stuff. before I uh, got arrested, by the way. Oh, no. it is yeah. it is such a it is like a scared straight program like Woo. i mean this is this is only okay. spoiling a, a one little scene in the first episode but it's such an old show this like it's like y y usually when the character is introduced like the main character like okay this is this is going to be the guy that we're following through prison and then you know he gets into the prison and uh schillinger the head of the aryan brotherhood is like hey you're a white fellow in here and we need to take care of you we need to stick together i've requested that you come to my cell you know, we will watch out. And then like this new guy's like, thanks so much, man. Like, I got to be careful in here. It's like, no problem. We whites, we got to stick together. Right. And the guy's like, hi. Okay. 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 I guess we're, I guess we're in prison now. First evening, first evening in prison. He has this guy bent over with his asshole spread. And he goes, I'm tattooing a swastika here. So everyone knows your Aryan property. Like right. A swastika right near his asshole with a pen. And this guy's just like, I'm nine hours into my, 15 years stint <laughs> and it's going poorly and you think like all right that might be his his bottom no no it's it continues to go down. it's no. it is it is a oh brutal. that was high times for him getting that was before ass, got bad <laughs> that was that was one of his best nights in prison yeah no and check out cool. oz just know that it's all bad news it's, it's intense all bad news. it's it's terrible it's terrible it's a terrible show. No, any it's not a show. show. Watch it's any a, other show. I've been watching. Trends. I've been watching Mr. In Between on FX. I think FX makes some of the best shows out there. Um, I loved Nip Tuck back in the day. I like The Shield a lot. Um, I, no, I, are, Oz is better than. I mean, do you know why The Sopranos was booked as a show? It's no. because of Oz's success. Oz was their first That's like the one program. redeeming quality of Oz. That, yeah. that if there was no Oz, you would have no Sopranos. So I say, Kyle well, thinks it was depressing as shit, and it is depressing sometimes. But it's just like it is a level of intensity in a show that is unmatched. If have you seen World War II, we wouldn't have like a lot of the technology we've got now. But I don't go talking about how great World War II was. Uh, I mean, I do, but in private, <laughs> in, private in our meetings where we wave at each other. What was that, um, Destiny? Have you have any of you guys seen The Wire? I love The Wire. It's one of the best shows ever made. It's top three ever made. Mm -hmm. I got it's bored. I, I got yeah. I got I got similar feelings from The Wire that everything was hopeless um, because even when they make progress, like you basically in all five seasons, mm -hmm. every system of fucked upness is always self perpetuating, mm -hmm. and any that, yeah. individual actor that would try to buck the system to do something better would get destroyed by the system. And then yeah, and then even by the end of season five, like everything was the same. Like, what nothing really changed. Like The Wire. He likes Walking Dead so much. Like, what's another show where, like, Walking Dead is his first grown-up show. A first show where, like, shit happens. You know, Scrubs, grown-ups like it, but it's kid-friendly. Yeah. Walking Dead is the How first old? show. He's 18, but he's special needs. So he's a little bit 8 and a little uh -huh. bit 18. It's tricky. And uh, I don't know what else he would like. I feel like The Wire is a really hard sell to people. Like, usually when people ask me about The Wire, the first thing I say is, like, it's really slow and really boring, especially because like really? if people are coming in to 
The Wire, you've got to keep in mind when they think police show, it's thinking like Law and Order SVU or like these like really like every episode is like solved crime. It's like a like a drama thing. And The Wire is very much like a slow burn that is a very different type of show, I think, than anything mm. else. I fucking love it. I think it's the best. Yeah, me too. Made. I, I do. Top I do three. too. For sure. Top three for me. You know what? I um, the, 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 the episode at the at the port um, is the wor- or the season is the worst season um, with Sabaka. Yeah. Was yeah. back, I, th- I thought that season was okay. I appreciated it. I know a lot of people oh, hated I it. I like but... it. I like. Mm-hmm. I don't hate it. I just think it's the worst of the seasons. It was, such a de- it was such a deceleration from season one that I was like, "Oh, come on!" Like it I was, was I was getting used like, to the intensity of season one, and then it, it just like, took mm-hmm. steps back. You never know what was going on at that time. It, if and I have nothing to prove this, and I have done zero research, but that's not going to stop me. Like, like maybe, maybe there were people saying like, "Ah, this is there's really not a lot of white people in the show," or maybe someone was saying. You're really making it seem like all criminals are black. Maybe something like that happened, and so they made that season and went in that direction. Or maybe it was planned from the very beginning. In any case, this whole season was just like a bit of a diversion. Because what what I really wanted to find out more about was the main like um, crime thing that was going on with uh, I'm I'm spacing on the character's name. Is it uh, Baker? No. <clears throat> You know the, well, the, the, the the two the two main black guys who are like running shit. Stringer uh, Bell and um Stringer, Barksdale, right? Barksdale. Yeah, Avon yeah. Barksdale. Yeah. Avon Barksdale and Stringer Bell. Yeah, they're they're the fucking stars of the show. And uh, whenever I see them now and things, Idris Elba plays um, Stringer, but I can't mm-hmm. I, I can't remember the name of the other actor. But whenever it, I see them, Wood Harris. Now, I'm, I I really like both of them. They're great actors. Uh, I like that show so much. It's 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 incredible. But Oz, just skip Oz. I promise you, you won't like Oz. It's not a good. Oh, okay. I can stick to my stomach watching it, and, and like I like all sorts of stuff. But I I get literally nauseous, like 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 grossed out, like upset by. It's watching. an intense show. It's a very. Mm-hmm. You, you said you'd seen uh, Sopranos, right? I have not. I haven't seen that one either. Oh, well, you got a, a you, lot of really good. You got to lead with that one. It's yeah. one of the better performances um, ever in television. What uh, what James Gandolfini did for uh, for Tony Soprano. It's very nuanced. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at first glance, it can kind of seem that he's pl- just playing the standard sociopath, um, but but there's a lot more nuance there. Um, he has all the hallmarks of a sociopath. This sort of um, over connection with children and animals. This this love for them, while while at the same time having a very difficult time forming meaningful relationships with with most people. Um, he's he's really out for himself. He justifies his uh, his his crimes and his his other violent actions away uh, time and time again. But then it then there's this little bit of a of a different side of him that comes out occasionally that that's really fascinating. There's an episode where there's um uh I won't spoil anything, but but like there's a pedophile. There's a pedophile, and he's fa- that pedophile has been found out, and there's this question as to what to do about it. And Tony's friends are all like, oh, this guy's got to go. This guy's got to die. We gotta, we're going to have this pedophile killed. And Tony actually has it arranged. He's like, yeah, you go, you go take care of this. And then the last minute he calls him, he's like, you know what? No, don't do it. Call it off. Call it off. He's like, are you sure? Yeah, don't do it. And Tony gets really drunk, and he's already on some medication, so it mixes with the medication. He stumbles into the house singing, and his wife like comes out. What? What are you? What's going on? He's like dancing with her, and he like falls on the floor, like laughing, just happier than you've ever seen him. And and like he kind of holds her and looks at her. And he's like, I didn't hurt nobody. I didn't hurt nobody. Like like he's he's just overjoyed that that he was able to like for once not be the sociopathic piece of shit. And it, it sort of shows you that like he's kind of become that. He wasn't made that. He wasn't born that. He's almost posing as a sociopath to get by in a world of sociopaths. Um, I, I find his his performance to be one of the best performances ever on television, for sure. It's really yeah. good. Um, and you know, I it's love great Tony because- as a character. I love him as a man. Like, 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 you're rooting for the bad guy every step of the way, and you know you are. You know who? Yeah. Um, like who's the guy with the like the haircut with the wings and big biceps? Polly. Polly Goltieri. I didn't appreciate Polly as much in the first viewing, but over <laughs> time, like, yeah, like his, his laugh, his, he's bad. He's worse than Tony, but he's not more powerful than Tony. So it kind of slips under the radar. Like he doesn't have agency kind of. And, um, see, he's like a legit sociopath. 
Paulie. Yeah. Is. Like he enjoys being sent out to fuck people up. Just like, and he doesn't even have to. He doesn't know. He doesn't ask when Tony tells him to go kill someone. He just, he doesn't care. He's just like excited about it. I, yeah, I, the, I, I like that character. Guy who's, is, Sill, the the one who's got like the like the weird fucking voice that's all retracted. Tony, I don't know if we should be, you know, going and doing this right now, like whatever the fuck it would be. Oh, he's yeah. the one who also seems like he's faking being harder than he is because he's in that world. Like Sill and Tony, I got that vibe a bit. I don't know. Sill seems like a real scummy guy, you know, with, with all the usury. Um, I didn't. Yeah, he like didn't him. like murdering people like Polly did. No, but he we really had a thing with. I didn't like how he treated that uh, that nineteen year old uh, uh, stripper that time that that Ralphie beat to death. I did like that line. Well, Ralphie of, was the meanest character in the show. <laughs> Ralphie's the the worst character in the show, and they make you like him somehow, which is great. Uh, there, there's that one scene where um, Tony asks Syl, he's like, "Do you think uh, Ralphie's a little weird about women?" And he's like, "I don't know, Tony. He did beat one to death once <laughs> for uh, for uh, what was it again?" <laughs> like, like nobody could remember why he had beaten her to death. They couldn't remember and because because there was no reason. Like, like Ralphie just came in and he's like, ah, Tracy, she fell. <laughs> <laughs> they go outside and her head is caved in. With, like, they go outside <laughs> and she's been beaten to death. Like this man has wet, has just beaten this beautiful nineteen year old. Fucking Christ, Ralphie, what the hell are you doing? Like he's just screaming ah, at him. Ah, get a rug. <laughs> Uh, it's a great show. It's, it's a great show. That one's highly recommended. Ever and you know the Sopranos is like the best show ever because I've never heard anyone be like the Sopranos. Eh, didn't quite get me. Yeah, didn't suck me in. Everyone loves the Sopranos. There's so many characters that you everyone finds a character that they can like root for or relate with to some degree. Like like I think a lot of women like uh, really relate to Carmela, the wife, because um, she's like she is a bit of like. She's a real guiding force behind Tony. Like, like, like she's the one kind of like trying to trying to deal with the fact that her husband is a mob boss and and justify that and deal with the fact that that's what's paid for her entire lifestyle while sort of reconciling that with her religious beliefs. But then after a while, she kind of comes into like there. I, I remember the exact episode when it happens. It's the episode where they have that sort of like. <clears throat> that speaker that shows up to talk about Italian women and she's yeah. bad mouthing the mob and like, like right. And, and all the other girls are like at, sitting at Carmela's top table. And they're like, can you believe those things she said with you sitting right there? And Carmela's like, what are you going to do? And that's <laughs> a common thing that these Italians say and that they say in the show, what are you going to do? But, but mm -hmm. the way she says it is very different than it's ever been said before in the show. She says, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And she just kind of like maintains eye contact because she's saying, what are you going to do about it, Gabby? <laughs> That's what she means. But it's very like under the radar and very under understated. And 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 she says it twice in a row. And, and Gabby gets up and goes and like like screams at the fucking uh, priest who had arranged for that, that that lady to come and be their guest speaker and everything. It's a it's a great show. It's a great show. something that I noticed in um in the wire, and I get really irritated when I watch a lot of other shows that I appreciate a lot on the wire is that they don't do cliffhangers ever. I never noticed oh. that about the wire. They don't. There are no there 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 might be like one just because that's how the story goes, mm -hmm. but otherwise there are no scenes where he's holding the gun, about to shoot him, and then like cut to the credits or something. Like everything is usually resolved more or less within an episode, or there's like ongoing plot arcs, but it's never a cliffhanger. I notice now when I watch shows, I pay attention to that. Um, and I don't know. If, does anybody here watch anime stuff at all? Uh, no, I've never. Really that really okay. I'm trying to think, um, because I, it's been so long since I watched any real shows. Game of Thrones was really bad with this, um, for yeah. remembering that, and then sometimes yeah. Breaking Bad would as well. But um, anytime I watch a show and I'm getting like three or four episodes in a row with the big cliffhangers, it actually just makes me so fucking irritated. I lose so much because it feels like you're not really like trying to write like a good show with like good plots and everything. You're just like trying to like leave like a big cliffhanger, so you got to watch the next episode to figure out what happens or whatever. And then yeah. uh, you know, I like it'll it take. I'm not watching the show real time, and they try that shit on me, but I have the oh, cheat you just go codes. To the next episode. Yeah, or they'll even do it like there's an obvious commercial break right here. Like, all right, oh, and yeah. then it cuts. And then they just flash back from another scene. <laughs> wait, I can't do yeah. it. You know, the guy's <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, ah, fuck you. I'm the, I didn't have to wait. You wanted me to, mm -hmm. but 
but I didn't have to. Worse is when like is if there's like a popular show, and I've done this with a few. Well, I did this with Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones. Is if it's getting really popular and you haven't watched it, you're like ah, oh, okay, fuck it, we'll start watching it. And then you do the big catch up, and you you know in a week you watch like two seasons yeah. of the show, but then you're caught up. And you go from like 100 miles an hour to five miles an hour. Now you've got to wait every week for the episodes to come out. Oof. That actually happened to me on Game of Thrones. I discovered Game of Thrones. I think it may be the beginning of the second season or end of the second Something season. Bad. So I got to watch like a whole year of it. And then I watched the next one. And then I was like, wait, what? That's it? I have to wait a year for more? This sucks. And That's the last show in the last, well, over a decade. That I've actually watched along real time, like no, nothing else was engaging, and and even then, like once it got to the later seasons, there were at least an episode or two. Once it got shitty, where it was like, "Oh, is Game of Thrones on tonight? Wow, oh, there's a blues game too. <laughs> and it'll, it'll, be, it'll be on in three hours." Also, no, the Marvel ones did that to me. Episode, I, I watched, watched every a, fucking episode <laughs> religiously. Too. I watched the uh, Marvel stuff. I bought recently. their merchandise. Oh, did you? you what I, you buy? I got shirts and I got cups and I got posters. I've I have a John fucking, Stark shield in the Game of Thrones room. I've got I've got <laughs> banners. I've got I've got the house flags. Like like dude, What's wrong with you? Why didn't you, why didn't you buy all the shit? I love, <laughs> I, you I, setting I, up your own little court? <laughs> why don't you I invest in magic shit? <laughs> <laughs> because you can play games with it. You can you can play games with your magic cards. That's a high I don't think I don't think anything in our lifetimes will ever climb so high and fall so far. I can't no. think of anything that no. That's just an unbelievable Yeah, fall from grace. To go from like that you're at a point, you gotta you have to consider you're at a point where you can be in stores uh, like Walmart listening to people in their fifties talking about yeah. Game of Thrones. Like everybody it's in society on, like, knew like, of their show. And on a, on Bumble, like on the dating site, like there's mm -hmm. a there's a like a question or a, a little prompt that you can like fill in. It's it's like I'll never get over and then you write in like Mm -hmm. what you will never get over and that that's sort of a little tidbit about people on their profiles so many people have i'll never get over the way game of thrones ended like, i mean like to go to from that much to now no it's done no one ever mentions it nobody talks about it we went through a whole pandemic nobody was talking about rewatching game of thrones yeah. nobody was talking about like people watch harry potter movies lord of the rings whatever but man game of thrones there is mm -hmm. just what an unbelievable legacy set. ruined it was Just, such a yeah. like that. I, I, you're right. I've I never heard anyone. God, about it since if, then. I wish someone. Well, no, I can't say that. How can I phrase, <laughs> how can I phrase it so that I can't? In Minecraft. <laughs>